Do you have to pay to use Instagram? What about Facebook and WhatsApp too? Although they're free today, that could all change tomorrow. And let me just tell you right now, things are not looking good. This massive feud between Apple and Facebook is now going to start affecting your friends, your family, and you, yes you, watching this video right now. So let's just kind of talk about this whole debacle. Who's the good guy? Who's the bad guy? What are they both doing right, wrong? These are six things you need to know about Apple versus Facebook and what is going to change for you. And a big thanks to Roborock for sponsoring this video. Apple as a company does not typically get itself in the middle of public fights or feuds. They're cool, they're calm and collected. I mean, come on, just look at Tim Cook. He's a cool, calm and collected guy. And seemingly Apple would just rather blend into the background, sort of quietly do their work as other companies take the public spotlight and duke out their differences for everyone to see and for everyone to judge. But that is not the case today, at least not anymore. Apple and Facebook are in this all out virtual war. They have some huge disagreements on data collection and user privacy and ultimately you and your personal information and how and what should be collected and taken from you. Apple as a company has always been very cautious and careful and protective for the most part of its users' data and their privacy. Famously about a decade ago, Steve Jobs said this. Privacy means people know what they're signing up for in plain English and repeatedly. And some people want to share more data than other people do. Ask them. Ask them every time. Make them tell you to stop asking them if they get tired of your asking them. In recent years, Apple has really doubled down their efforts on privacy, safety, and security, really publicly cementing their view on this, letting the world know that they really highly value privacy and security of their users, and they want users to have full control and full transparency over basically all aspects of their devices. What photos are being accessed, when they're being accessed, when your camera or microphone are being used. And now, if apps have the ability to track you or not to track you, you ultimately have that choice and can make that decision for yourself. Facebook, on the other hand, runs a very different type of business and with a very different business model. They are sort of in, for lack of a better word, the business of personal information and they want to collect as much information about you as possible, your friends, your family, your colleagues, what your likes are, what your dislikes are, where you live, what you like to do. All of that stuff is very precious and important to Facebook and they want to collect as much as they possibly can because their theory behind it is that the more they know about you, the better and more relevant the ads they serve you can be, the more relevant the ads, the more money they can make. And uh, that's just a really good thing for Facebook is making money and they want those ads to work and almost be in a sense creepy good. And the way they are creepy good is because Facebook knows a whole lot about you. And some of you might even remember a time, not even that long ago, that Facebook was sort of this golden child tech company. They were a very liked and very well regarded social media company that pretty much everyone was on. You could connect with your friends and family across the the street or across the world. You could write on their wall, you could send messages, you could virtually poke them, you could play with them in Farmville. There was a reason many people jumped on the Facebook bandwagon and joined this platform. It was a great way to connect with people. It was a great way to meet new people, make new friendships, kind of join uh, mutual groups of uh, favorite activities and stuff like that. There were many reasons that Facebook was very liked for so long, but Things have changed. The court of public opinion has really changed on Facebook and not in their favor. And after multiple scandals and data breach issues and just kind of yucky news regarding Facebook and their kind of sleazy business practices, the public opinion on Facebook has really changed. And again, it is not good. They've gone from basically being universally loved to almost seemingly universally despised by many people, including probably many of you who are watching this video right now. So over the years, Apple has done more to kind of lock down their devices and to make them safe and secure, while Facebook has kind of done the opposite. They have grown larger and larger with acquisitions of apps like WhatsApp and Instagram, and they're trying to collect as much information as possible. So the two companies are kind of heading in the wrong direction, but ultimately they are just butting heads on how this data collection should be done on Apple devices. And the feud between Apple and Facebook has honestly been going on for a very long time. Even over a decade ago, Steve Jobs himself referred to Facebook as Feecee Book, 
in a internal company email, so make of that what you will. Suffice it to say, Steve Jobs was not a fan of Facebook. And the two companies have disagreed over a myriad of things over the years, and now all of that is sort of coming to the surface, tensions are boiling over, and things are not looking good. But really, the breaking point to all of this came with the announcement, and now the subsequent release, of iOS 14.5 and a feature called App Tracking Transparency, which essentially gives users a very simple question when they open up an app that wants to track them. They either have the ability to ask the app not to track them across different apps and websites, or allow the app to track and just continue as they normally would. It might not seem like a very tough question to answer, but it has become a very loaded question that has stirred up quite a bit of controversy. But see, Facebook does not want you to tap that button and virtually give them no way to track you outside of Facebook apps like Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp. And the theory is, and what Facebook is afraid of, is that the less information they can collect about you, the less relevant the ads can be. And the less relevant the ads can be, the less effective they are, and the tap of a virtual button, which seems like nothing to you, could end up costing Facebook billions and billions of dollars. But important to note that it's not just Facebook. Apple is making this change system-wide. All developers have to comply, and they are even giving developers the space to kind of plead their case with users on why they should allow or not allow them to track. And some companies have complied with the new rules and they've changed some of their underlying technology like Google, some apps have behaved like normal, and some have even pleaded their case for users on why they believe app tracking should be turned on. And I think one of the big takeaways here that everyone needs to understand and remember is that you ultimately do have a choice. Now we could talk all day about Apple and the choices they give users on Mac OS and in regards to other apps on the iPhone and stuff like that. But in this scenario, in terms of privacy and safety and security and tracking, you have a choice to either allow the app to track you and to kind of move about your business as normal or ask the app not to track. It's a very simple prompt. And ultimately, whether you agree with Facebook or you agree with Apple, you're the one that gets to make the choice in the end. Obviously though, Facebook does not like this idea at all. And they have waged an all out war against Apple, claiming that they are anti-competitive, they're hurting small businesses, and they're also starting to make some sort of vague declarations, almost some vague threats to their users. In one case here, we see an instance where Facebook is sort of pleading their case on why tracking should be turned on. And one of the cases they make is so that their apps like Facebook and Instagram could remain free to use. Before we continue with more of this Apple versus Facebook drama and this crazy feud, I wanna take a quick break and talk to you about one of the coolest pieces of tech I've gotten to use in a long, long time. And that is a product from this video's sponsor, Roborock. This is the Roborock S7. And not only is it the most powerful, most intelligent and versatile robot vacuum I have ever used, but it's packed with so much awesome tech inside that it's become one of my favorite gadgets of all time. And honestly, I could not have gotten this Roborock S7 at a better time because I'm currently moving out of my old apartment. So I got to clean that and make sure it's all spick and span and good to go for the new tenants. And I also want to clean the new place before I move in, just to make sure it's clean and all good to go. So I kind of let Roborock S7 run wild, clean everything. And it has done a fantastic job and is super awesome to watch in action. One of my favorite features of the S7 is not only can it vacuum, but it can also mop as well. The built-in sonic mopping technology scrubs your floors up to 3000 times per minute. And I kid you not, when I first got this thing out of the box, my wife and I just sat back and watched this thing work for 45 minutes. I even shot this video on my phone. It was just absolutely incredible to watch in action. It also has an intelligent mop built-in that'll automatically lift up when carpet is detected with some help from the built-in ultrasonic carpet recognition. Another one of my favorite features is the built-in precision mapping technology that lets the Roborock S7 map out your entire home. With the help of a LiDAR sensor on top, the S7 can map not only an entire floor, but thanks to multi-level mapping support in the app, it can map each floor individually as well. That way, for example, if you set up a no-go zone on one floor versus another, the S7 knows exactly what to do on each floor to get the job done right. And the S7 has got an all new rubber brush that lasts longer, it's more durable, and avoids those dreaded tangles. The Roborock S7 is truly fantastic. It is awesome to watch this thing in action. It's versatile, it's smart, and it's one of the coolest gadgets I've gotten the chance to use in a long, long time. I highly recommend it. I love this thing, and I know you guys will as well. So you wanna learn more and pick up a Roborock S7 for yourself today, which I recommend you do, hit that link right down below to learn more. Something to also think about for better or for worse is that both companies kind of need each other. 
Apple does need Facebook. There are millions and millions and millions of people around the world who use Facebook every day, and many of which own an iOS device. If one day Facebook was just not accessible on the iPad or the iPhone, I think many people would honestly switch over to Android or other options. I'm not kidding. I think many people would actually do that because they heavily rely on Facebook. And just not having Facebook in the App Store would be a great thing, but also it wouldn't be a good thing for the end user. And I think that Apple does to a certain extent need Facebook to to comply and to be available on their devices. And on the other end, Facebook also needs Apple as well. They need that treasure trove of user base. They need uh, those iOS users and those iPad users and kind of blocking out a whole subset of users is not a good thing for their business as well. But in the interest of fairness, I do wanna say that Apple is not blameless here as well, and they do have their fair share of critics and criticism over some of their practices. Not so much over privacy, safety, and security, though that is the case for some as well, but it mainly is about their walled garden and their ecosystem and the steps they take to exert their control over users who use their platform and are in sort of the Apple ecosystem. You might know right now, they're going through a very public and very nasty lawsuit with Epic over the removal of Fortnite on the iOS App Store. That is honestly a whole separate video topic for another day. But what you do need to know is that some criticize Apple and say that they're using privacy and security as a shield in order to enact more control over their users and to keep them into the walled garden of the Apple ecosystem and on those devices. I'm not gonna comment one way or the other that is your decision to make, but in the interest of fairness and transparency and kind of showing both sides, Facebook's getting some criticism over what they're doing and their business practices, and Apple's also getting some as well, but it's your decision to kind of make up your mind on who you agree with and who is right and who is wrong. Now, obviously there is a lot of uncertainty with how this is going to play out. It doesn't seem like it's gonna go away anytime soon. It seems like Apple and Facebook are going to continue to feud in the public for a while, and there is no real clear resolution to this. There is a lot unknown. But what we can be fairly confident of is that Apple is going to continue to double down their efforts on privacy, safety, security, and transparency on the devices in their ecosystem. I'm sure in just a couple of weeks when we see iOS 15 publicly debuted at WWDC, that Apple will continue to put more steps into place to make this tracking even more transparent, to go a step deeper, to show you even more about what's happening on your device, who's collecting what information, when they're doing it, how they're doing it, and ultimately give you more control over what is happening on your device. Devices. But ultimately though, at the end of the day, it is your choice to make. You can choose to opt into tracking, you can choose to opt out of tracking, and you're the one that gets to use these platforms, use these devices, and ultimately the choice is pretty much yours. Could we see Facebook charge for their apps tomorrow? I'm not sure, though I certainly wouldn't count it out, and I'm sure that Facebook will continue to persuade users any way they can to opt into this tracking. Despite Apple's best efforts, they can't really control Facebook, and Facebook will do what Facebook wants to do, and it's gonna be really interesting to see exactly how this story plays out. But what are your thoughts who do you think is right in this? Do you think Apple is doing a noble deed, a noble uh, effort to uh, make privacy and safety and security at the forefront of their devices and make it a very important issue? Or do you think Facebook should be allowed to collect this information, do with this information what they want, as long as the service remains free? What are your thoughts? Do you agree with Apple, Facebook? Let us know in the comments down below who you side with, curious to know. As always, thank you guys so much for watching the Apple Circle. Thank you very much. I'm Robert Rosenfeld, and I will see you in the next one.